Universal? What? This is Toho, baby. Oh yeah, this is what we've all been waiting for. The match of the century. You know what I'm talking about. I'm the Asian film fanatic, and this is my review of King Kong vs. Godzilla. The 1962 Japanese version, of course. The third movie of the franchise, King Kong vs. Godzilla is significant for a variety of reasons. The dramatic shift in tone from drama to comedy adventure, this being Godzilla's first color widescreen presentation, and featuring a western movie monster crossover. In Asian cinema history, there are some matchups that are absolutely legendary. Bruce Lee vs. Chuck Norris, Jet Li vs. Jackie Chan, Donnie Yen vs. Mike Tyson, <laughs> and King Kong vs. Godzilla. Like the original Godzilla, and Godzilla 1985, King Kong vs. Godzilla has two different cuts. The Japanese version and the American version. The difference is in the soundtrack and the edits. Having seen both, which do I prefer? Well, some of my earliest Godzilla memories are from the English dub. The inserted English scenes explain things better, but seem a little awkward and clunky. Sometimes the dub makes the movie more fittingly fun and comical. It also appeals to my childhood nostalgia. Today, however, as an Asian movie fan, I'm a purist. I like both, but by default, it's gotta be the Japanese version first. By far, the biggest thing the American version lacks is the music by Godzilla-themed maestro Akira Ifukube. <laughs> Most of his bombastic, ominous, urgent soundtrack is gutted and replaced with unremarkable stock music. The American version doesn't even play the Godzilla theme. Losing Ifukube is like replacing John Williams, it's hard to top that. So pros and cons for both. The primary Showa era Godzilla movie makers are involved. Gojira director Ishiro Honda does a good job working in Toho scope, as does notable special effects director Eiji Tsuburaya. The effects and miniatures some people might find them cheesy, but I love them. The suits, the blue screen, matte paintings, and miniatures are reasonably well done and are very professional. Although, Kong's face is looking a little derpy compared with his American incarnations. I've seen cheap looking special effects, and for the time, this isn't one of them. In a book on Tsuburaya by August Vergone, it's mentioned that the screenplay by Shinichi Sekizawa was intended as a satire on the rising commercialization in Japan. But I wouldn't say that's a strong point of the movie. Here's the story. Mr. Tago is an advertising executive for a pharmaceutical company that sponsors a boring science show. He learns that a new sedative drug is discovered from berries found on Faroe Island in the South Pacific. Legend has it, the island is inhabited by a terrifying monster. To increase ratings, he sends TV workers Osamu Sakurai and Kinsaburu Furu to capture the monster and bring it back. There's also a small ineffectual subplot on Sakurai's sister, Fumiko, and her boyfriend, Kazuo. During this time, Godzilla resurfaces and their meeting is inevitable. It's also fun to note, Akahiko Hirata who played Dr. Serizawa in the first Godzilla, cameos as Dr. Shigizawa, a completely different scientist. If you know me, I'm rooting for the big G. And it ain't Gorilla I'm talking about. Godzilla. Everyone knows Kong doesn't stand a chance. Everyone knows this isn't a fair fight. Godzilla's atomic breath alone could turn Kong into ashes. But who wants to see an easy fight? You gotta make things interesting. That's why they made that little monkey bigger and stronger. While I respect the legacy of Kong, admittedly, I don't know very much about it. I probably have more experience with Donkey Kong. I only have a vague awareness of the Kong mythology. He's on Skull Island. He gets captured. He's exploited. He grabs a girl and climbs a tower. I could guess themes on exploitation, man versus nature, and fixation on women are interesting. 
in King Kong vs. Godzilla, we touch all those cliches, but with less development. So, is it a good movie? Well, the characters in King Kong vs. Godzilla are watchable and involved, but lack emotional weight. Clearly, there's more comedy and a lighter tone than the previous two Godzilla movies. The most times we care are when secondary characters get put in danger. The monster fights are the main attraction, but the filler story has to be interesting too. Those emotional stakes enhance the action. Besides the octopus battle, there's only two fight encounters. The first is weak and short, but the climax fight is reasonably satisfying. When it comes to Godzilla movies, I'm an Ishiro Honda Showa era fan. The classic Godzilla. Those iconic sound effects and music themes do a lot. The monster suit action and the physical miniatures still carry a lot of charm. It's a great showdown worth watching, but for me, King Kong vs. Godzilla comes out average overall. Now I'm going to commentate the movie with spoilers. Mr. Tago is frustrated with the science show. The show mentions a submarine investigating a glowing iceberg. We get introduced to Sakurai and Furu working on a commercial. This was deleted from the American version. Passion! A professor introduces the berries and monster, convincing Mr. Tago it'd make great publicity. Sakurai returns to his sister's for dinner. Kazuo humorously shows him some ultra-strong thread wire. As a kid, I've always thought he was holding the wire between his hands in a weird way. The submarine crashes and gets destroyed by Godzilla's breath. Has that catch fire? They're underwater! Sakurai and Furu are pretty much abandoned on the island with an interpreter. Oh look, blackface! So anyway, the natives are hostile until they're shown a magic box and given cigarettes. Clearly, we're not being PC here. Marabaro! Thunder drives the natives into worship mode and Kong's roar can be heard. Here's a classic quotable scene. An American helicopter checks out the submarine's last location, when all of a sudden... Oh, it's Godzilla! Oh, it's Godzilla! And the American dub's also great. Godzilla! Godzilla! They film a lot of the monster's movements in slow motion to give the impression of a giant. We get some cool tank battles and atomic breath destruction. Mr. Tago stresses out when the only buzz in the press is Godzilla. This fake lizard part's funny. Furu has a hard time sleeping, so the interpreter sends the cigarette kid to get some berry booze. What can go wrong? Maybe his mom. And a giant octopus. And this. It's like, never trust a kid with a cup of juice. It's a thatched hut. Stick your hand through the door and unlock it. Skeetle, are you drinking berry booze? Yeah. I think this is the first and only time a real live animal is used as a giant monster in a Godzilla film. Kong finally makes his appearance and gives the octopus a beatdown. He then proceeds to knock back a couple jars of juice. Kong's not a gorilla who can hold down his liquor. What are you guys doing? He's not even looking. He's asleep. Mr. Tago finally gets the publicity he sought and decides to helicopter over to the ship. Somehow, they managed to tie King Kong onto a giant raft rigged with TNT, just in case things get out of control. Towing him back to Japan, they get stopped by the Navy because they consider Kong to be smuggled goods. I guess this is where the satire comes in. Meh. In the American version, they're stopped more sensibly for national security. There's a subplot that cuts in involving a fake-out disappearance of Fumiko's boyfriend, prompting her to travel on the train. Godzilla continues his rampage. Despite this, Kazuo catches up with Fumiko. 
Kong starts to wake up and after a bit of humor, they blow up the raft. But that doesn't stop King Kong! The military plans to dig a big pit and detonate explosives once Godzilla falls into it. Kong finally meets Godzilla and as expected, is no match against atomic breath. His janky reactions are pretty funny though. What a wuss. I ain't that stupid. The trap pit doesn't work, and neither does shocking Godzilla with a million volts. But that doesn't affect King Kong. Yeah, he eats electricity for dinner. Stopping the train, he grabs Fumiko, making Kazuo awkwardly distressed. Fumiko! Fumiko! They get the idea to put Kong to sleep with the drums and berries. Once they get Fumiko back, the plan is to airlift Kong to fight off Godzilla. Now the real battle begins! This time, they give Kong the agile advantage. With the power of featherweight rocks, he muscles up Godzilla with brute strength. You run, you slide, you hit the bump, you take a dive. Kong is such a klutz! He wakes up and Godzilla knocks him out again! Lightning strikes Kong and he gets an electricity power-up. Other films have shown Godzilla powering up through lightning as well. But not in this one. Kong gives Godzilla a beatdown, MMA style. Look at that fire, it's gotta be hell wearing a full-fledged furry suit in that heat. Yeah, shove that tree in Godzilla's mouth! King Kong knows judo too. They make their way to Atami Castle. And when you have two giant monsters, you know what we want to see. That castle's going down! They scrap their way into the ocean and part ways. Who's the winner? Officially, King Kong was declared the winner. But to me, it's a draw. Look how big that water tank is. I read somewhere it's 288 feet wide. That's crazy. The end roar includes Godzilla, something the American version omits. So that's King Kong vs Godzilla. The most memorable scenes for me are of course the monster fights and the comedy. What about the satire angle? We go from nuclear cautionary to mocking commercialization. Is it a successful satire? Eh, it lacks poignancy and it's kind of an afterthought. Mr. Taco just seems like a comically stressed exec. Nothing clever nor ironic to be found in his advertising or exploits. In the final Ocean Cliff farewell, he gives up on Kong as a loss. Dr. Sekizawa gives an abrupt moral message on how humans must learn to adapt to their surroundings. In a more accurate subtitle translation, he moralizes that humans must learn and change how they treat plants and animals. Which seems kind of tacked on and is handled better in the next franchise movie, Mothra vs. Godzilla. That movie shares many thematic similarities, but it's much stronger in every way. Regardless of its flaws, for what it is, King Kong vs. Godzilla has a legacy that has stood the test of time in Asian cinema history. A legacy that continues in Godzilla vs. Kong. I'm the Asian film fanatic, and I'll see you later.